Hello everyone, my name is Neha and this is the second lecture on electronic circuits. In this lecture, we are going to cover GFR biasing techniques. Before we get into detail of different types of biasing techniques, uh, let's first see uh, what the formula we can use to calculate the drain current. So here on the screen, you see this formula uh, which says ID is equals to IDSS and then bracket uh, and then 1 minus uh, VGS uh, divided by VGS off and this uh, bracket, bracket closed and uh, this whole bracket is uh, squared. So here um, ID, is, ID is your drain current and IDSS is uh, drain to source current uh, when your uh, input is short circuit or you can say when your VGS is uh, equals to zero. Okay, or you can say when VGS is equal to zero at that time, at that point, whatever is your drain current uh, or whatever your maximum drain current is your IDSS. Okay, so uh, when the values of IDSS and VGS off are known for any JFET, the drain current ID can be calculated using the formula. And uh, this holds true only when uh, VDS, uh, which is your drain to source uh, voltage is equal or greater than your VDSP, where P is basically your uh, pinch off voltage. So when the pinch off condition reaches at that time, whatever the voltage you has uh, is basically represents your VDSP. And uh, this means your VDS uh, must be uh, equal or uh, greater than your VDSP, which means your pinch off voltage. Uh, and uh, it can be used for any JFET, N channel or P channel uh, when IDSS and VGS off are known. In most of the cases, uh, when you attempt the numerical problems, this IDSS and VGS off uh, will be given. Where this VGS off uh, particularly indicates the value of negative 4 volts. Uh, so, so these value must be, usually they are uh, given in the numerical problems. Now moving on to the next slide. Now we're going to start with JFET biasing techniques. Uh, so before we begin, we should know what biasing means. Uh, biasing is uh, basically a process of establishing the proper operating voltage and current uh, in the circuit uh, such that the JFET can be operated in the specific region. Okay, so that's your Biasing, and you have uh, seen different biasing techniques for uh, BJT, which is your bipolar junction uh, transistor. And now we are going to see most commonly used biasing, techni biasing techniques in JFET. So as you can see here, uh, these are the four different types of biasing techniques we are going to see in this lecture. First is the gate biasing technique, second is the self bias, uh, third is the voltage divider, and fourth is the current source. So let's read this quickly. Many techniques can be used to bias JFET. In all cases, the gate source junction is a uh, reverse bias. So you have to keep in mind that gate source junction is going to be reverse biased in all the cases. Now let's begin with the first type of biasing technique, which is your uh, gate bias. Now here on the screen, we see three different circuits. Uh, the first circuit is the gate bias circuit. And as you can see that uh, in this circuit, we have a RD resistor connected to a positive VDD. And then we have uh, uh, this gate terminal connected to RG and further to the VGG. In the second circuit, uh, we have a AC signal, uh, which is coupled by this uh, capacitor and going to the gate terminal. And in the third circuit, if you notice that this RG resistance has been removed and uh, so this there will be no AC signal going to the gate because the signal will basically go through this uh, terminal to the ground. So these are the three different types of, uh, uh, so these, this is basically the gate bias circuit. And in these two circuits, uh, the coupling has, the coupling has been shown in this one. And, and in this circuit, uh, particularly the, uh, you can see how the uh, AC signal can be grounded by removing the RG. 
Now uh, let's see uh, by if you apply the KVL then uh, what equation you get for VDS uh, where VDS is uh, the voltage across the drain and the source. Uh, so this is your drain, this is your source and this is your gate. So we are trying to uh, measure the voltage across this uh, these two terminals which is uh, the potential across these two terminals is going to be your VDS. Now we are going to see how we have obtained this uh, equation uh, VDS is equals to VDD minus IDRD. This has been obtained by applying the KVL in this loop. So let's say uh, this terminal is connected to a battery. Uh, so this is the positive terminal, negative, positive, negative, and then it is connected to this, uh, this source, okay? So this is positive. This is negative and that's what it is showing here VDD so this is your VDD all right uh, now if you apply the KVL Kirchhoff voltage law in this circuit uh, and uh, let's say the the current is flowing in this way uh, so this is the direction of the current and then further here like this okay and then down here Okay, so in uh, Kirchhoff voltage law, it does not matter uh, which way uh, you take uh, the convention of the current. Uh, it just make sure that uh, the algebraic sum of the uh, your equation which you have uh, in the closed circuit must be equals to zero. Okay, so uh, here uh, uh, I'm assuming that the direction is this way, and if I assume that that the then considering from this particular uh, point uh, where I see the negative sign, so I'll, I can write something like this. Uh, uh, this is my Kirchhoff uh, voltage uh, equation where negative V D D is equals to, um, or we can uh, instead of uh, writing equal, uh, let's maybe. Uh, maybe uh, write down all the signs and then equate them okay so negative vdd and then the after moving here the first sign which i see here for this uh, uh, across this rd resistance is positive so we make this positive this one is negative so positive um, i d is the drain current which is flowing there and then this rd is the resistance so this is your voltage uh, across this and then plus is going to be here this is your plus and this is your negative and this voltage is your VDS where this VDS is the voltage between the drain and the source so plus VDS must be equals to zero okay so we got negative vdd uh, starting from here negative vdd uh, vdd uh, plus idrd and then plus vds equals to zero now if you uh, if you uh, rearrange this equation then you will get the same equation here so vdc if you just keep it like it here and then move this whole term to the right hand side then you will get vds is equals to vdd minus rd id rd okay that's how you get this equation uh, for vds and if you want to find the uh, Kirchhoff voltage law across this for example you want to find vgs so you will you can apply the Kirchhoff voltage law in this particular loop so that's how you uh, calculate uh, the voltage uh, now next we have uh, another type of biasing technique which is the self bias and this is another common type of biasing technique in JFET and in this uh, type of biasing technique we use a single power supply uh, which is the drain supply voltage VDD which you see here and then these the gate voltage and the source voltage they both are grounded and then there are three different resistances we have RD which is the drain resistance and RG is the uh, gate resistance and uh, and then you have RS, uh, which is your uh, source resistance. Uh, so, so you can see for the direction of the drain current, it has been shown here. The source is uh, positive, uh, is with respect to the ground. And uh, 
so this is uh, so let's let's see here uh, vgs is the voltage between gate and source uh, vg is approximately equals to zero volts and rg is very high so this uh, uh, this uh, gate resistance is very high uh, one mega ohm it can range from uh, 100 kilo ohm to uh, it can go really large uh, depending upon the circuit and then you have this rd resistance as one kilo ohm so this has been all these are values have been assumed for this particular circuit okay and then idss is 10 milliamps uh, is like standard uh, in most of the gfits and vgs off is negative four and this curve which you see over here is basically the transconductance curve and uh, this curve is drawn between the idss which is the drain to source current uh, when the vgs is equals to uh, zero or you can say when the vgs is shorted at that time you will get 10 milliamps and um, and then this is your vgs off um, uh, which is negative four volts now let's see uh, the kvl equation for this particular circuit uh, and it says because there is no gate current uh, vg is equals to zero volts uh, therefore vgs is calculated like this vgs is the voltage between the vg and the source voltage vg minus vs you know that this is grounded so uh, vg is going to be your zero volts and uh, negative uh, vs so vgs is going to be equals to negative vs uh, where vs is basically uh, equals to IDRS and we know that there is some uh, drain current flowing into the circuit so uh, so this RD uh, will represent that uh, current and uh, RS is this resistance uh, so we can say that VGS is equals to this is this is the same equation written over here and uh, in the place of VS we have written IDRS so 0 volts minus IDRS which means VGS is going to be equals to negative uh, IDRS so that's how you can calculate the VGS and if you have to calculate the uh, VDS uh, then you would do uh, the same way uh, which we have done previously. Um, uh, I can quickly show once again here. So, so like previously you had uh, positive, negative, positive, negative and then connect them together. So the equation which will come out to be is going to be uh, negative uh, VDD, VDD plus ID, ID, RD plus VDS plus uh, it's going to be IDRS, ID and RS, and this whole will be equals to zero because that's what our Kirchhoff voltage law uh, suggests and then you can put the value of uh, VDS like uh, so let me find a space maybe let's write here uh, VDS is going to be equal to uh, equal to VDD and negative sign and then ID you can see that uh, ID can be taken common and bracket uh, rd plus r s okay so this will be the equation for your vd s uh, this is the final equation so so these uh, so this equation and this equation you'll be using to uh, solve the numerical problems uh, now let's see how to calculate. Uh, there's a there's another way of calculating this uh, this uh, source resistance, and we are going to see that next. Uh, the source resistance, which is RS, must be carefully selected for any JFET circuit uh, with self bias, and we'll be using these two formulas where. ID will be made uh, approximately equals to IDSS by 2 when VGS is approximately equals to VGS of by 4. So this is the rough approximation uh, and this will provide a, a reasonably uh, accurate results. So we saw previously this formula VGS is equals to negative IDRS. So using the same formula and putting the value of VGS and ID into the previous formula VGS is equals to negative IDRS. 
uh, we got the value of rs uh, so you will put the value of vgs vgs of by 4 upon uh, ideas uh, divided by 2 so if you simplify then you will get this value negative vgs of divided by 2 idss uh, so this is the formula for rs and uh, this is uh, the way you can calculate it and you'll get some approximate uh, value for uh, source resistance and most of the time in your numerical problem the value of vgs of and idss is given so you can directly calculate the value of rs in case if it's not given in your in the uh, in the problem now the next time uh, next type of uh, biasing technique is the voltage divider uh, biasing technique and uh, you can see this circuit is forming like a voltage divider uh, right uh, we have r1 and r2 resistor uh, and then we have rd and rs resistor so let's read here since the gate source junction, junction has extremely high resistance uh, the r1 and um, this r2 voltage divider is practically unloaded uh, voltage divider bias is more stable than either the gate or self biased uh, so compared to the previous methods you saw techniques you saw uh, this is one of the most reliable uh, method and now we are going to see how we can basically solve this circuit to find out the operating point so um, so here uh, we have a uh, we have we have used the voltage divider formula vg is equal to r2 by we are finding out the voltage across this and this is your vg voltage so if you apply the voltage divider rule across here across r2 then we will be using this formula r2 divided by r1 plus r2 multiplied by the total uh, voltage and the <coughs> total voltage is here is uh, vdd and that's what we have here now the source voltage uh, which is vs they, it can be calculated as uh, vs by using by by uh, applying a loop equation in this uh, particular circuit so here you have this vg voltage and here you have uh, here let's let's use the pen and here you have uh, this is your vs okay and this is your vg and in between is your vgs okay so this is your vgs um so so using this formula vgs is equals to vg minus vs uh, that's the same formula if you apply the kvl you'll get this equation since id is equals to is so id is uh, this current and uh, this is going to be approximately equals to is because the gate source junction has uh, extremely high uh, resistance so this is going to be approximately equal and if that's the case then uh, then we can say that id is equals to vs by rs so in this uh, voltage divider um, you, you need to remember that these resistances uh, the the gate source junction resistance is very very high and uh, that will make a, uh, your id equals to is and then in that case uh, your drain current can be can also be written as um, is equals to vs by rs so vs you can find using this formula uh, you will first find out the vg by this voltage divider and then vgs uh, vgs it may be given in your problem and then uh, you can calculate the vs and then you can calculate the drain current using this vs and rs rs can you can calculate also if it is not given in the problem using these two values uh, uh, and the formula which i've shown you in the previous slide now the drain voltage vd can be calculated uh, in this particular uh, loop where uh, vd uh, you can use uh, the same way we have applied uh, in the previous cases like uh, negative uh, vd vdd uh, and then plus idrd id this is id uh, okay we need to re erase this and let's erase this too so this is your id and rd and then plus vd and this is going to be equal to zero all right so this is your vd point here and uh, this is this will be something like this negative uh, positive negative positive 
negative something like this so you're trying to calculate the vd you know vdd and rd um, and then by using so this formula if you this is the first initial kvl equation and from this this equation has been uh drived uh, so you will you will put vdd negative vdd on the right hand side and id rd positive id rd on the right hand side then that will become negative and this equation will be obtained so uh now you have an equation for uh, VD as well, and you can solve the circuit. You have solved the circuit using these equations. Uh, now uh, let's move on to the last type of uh, JFET biasing technique, which is the current source biasing technique. And in the current source biasing technique, we use NPN transistor. Uh, along with the GFET and this NPN transistor uh, you can see this is the emitter bias and it acts like a current source for GFET uh, for this GFET okay so if you see this type of uh, this is your NPN transistor and this is emitter bias and this is this is basically acting like a current source for your JFET here the drain current flows and this drain current uh, it is going to be equal to the IC because they both are connected and um, and this uh, this drain current which is equals to your IC and it says here as well uh, which is independent of the value of a gate a gate to source voltage so this value the current which is flowing here is independent of this uh, voltage and let's uh, let's see some uh, how how we can solve this circuit all right so we have vdd over here rd one kilo ohm and uh, gate resistance is uh, very high uh, one mega ohm and emitter resistance is 2.2 kilo ohm and then uh, this uh, emitter voltage is 15 volts given so NPN transistor uh, with emitter bias acts like a current source for the JFET. The drain current equals to, it's the same thing which I have shown you in the previous slide. IC is equals to ID. IC is calculated. Uh, so you calculated using this formula. So VB, VBE is basically the voltage between the base and the emitter. Uh, and this is the base and this is the emitter. So let's say this as VBE. So I have in this uh, now I have written all the values here. You see the VBE positive negative, and then you see the IC current flowing in this direction, and then further uh, VEE is connected. Uh, your VE is negative, so that's why you see here negative VEE, and this is the negative sign because uh, this is the negative terminal, this is the positive terminal. That's why you see the positive sign here. So if you apply the KVL in this particular loop, you will get this equation starting from here. Uh, you will you see a negative sign here. This is your negative that's why you have negative VEE and as you go forward here you see the positive sign uh, VBE uh, which is positive and then further IC RE is co also going to be here uh, positive so unless it is mentioned we we'll, we are going to assume that all the signs uh, as we go forward they are positive in the KVL okay and the algebraic sum should be equals to zero that's why equals to zero and if, if you rearrange this equation then you will get this uh, formula which is ic is equals to vee minus vbe upon re so that's how you calculate the value of ic and ic is approximately equals to your id uh, is the same current and uh, and 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 this way you can calculate the drain current so if you have any question regarding uh, Kirchhoff voltage law, uh, please feel free to ask uh, me in the lab. Uh, uh, this Once you understand the basics of uh, Kirchhoff voltage law, all the circuits uh, are pretty easy to solve. So we have covered four biasing techniques and uh, this is the end of the lecture. Thank you so much for watching.